Hey, this is Marcus Buff Bagwell here. Uh, recently, I have lost my father. He passed away uh, Saturday, uh, this past Saturday, which would be October the 12th, 2024. My father was born March 17th, 1945. He was 79 years old. He would have been 80. Uh, what a, I mean, the stories of my father, there's a couple really bad ones that happened along the way, but man, 98% of my life growing up under my father, Steve Bagwell, was, was wonderful. <clears throat> it was absolutely wonderful. At the first thought I remember my father, I remember being five years old and showing up to a house that was a mansion. It was a be beautiful big house that um, I didn't really know about money and things like that at all, but I remember I had my guns on, my cowboy hat, and I was five years old, so this would have been 1975 where I, I saw the, the big house that we were moving into. And we moved into there, and I remember from a very young age that uh, just my father and mother always being there. I remember at a young age, laying in my father's arms, worried about death, asking him about dying. You know, like, how, how, do we really die? We really go away? And me, and me crying. And, and, and as a father, I remember him being there and like made me feel better to the point of never bringing it up again. Like he made it, whatever he told me at the time, it was good enough that I never worried about death again. Um, so he was a great father. Uh, he, was a, he was great about talking to us. Um, he was great about uh, just being what he was supposed to be. I mean, he was a self-made millionaire uh, by 1972, high school dropout. He uh, got out of school in the 10th grade and all he knew was work. And him and my mother were, were married at, uh, he was 16 years old, my mom was 18. They got married very young and he was, his parents owned the lumber business called General Supply. And he followed in the same footsteps, but he opened a, a bigger, better one that worked. And for the next 17 years, we would be known as Southeastern Building Supply, the Bagwells of Marietta. And it was a powerful name, man. It was a big deal. We had, we had it all. We had, we had money, we had looks, we had athletic ability, and we had money. And those things can really mess up a life. I mean, from outsiders looking in, a lot of hate, a lot of jealousy comes with, with those things. And we could not have had a better leader than my father and my mother, but my father being the leader of the bunch, explaining what was coming to us, explaining why I'm batting 750 and for the baseball team. And my parents gave the baseball coach two pieces of lumber and the rumor got started that I was starting on the baseball team because my parents gave the lumber to the team. Rumors like that because of money and it just, it just, it was a lot of jealous, a lot of jealousy around money as everybody knows. And then you throw some athletic ability on top of that and you throw a good looking family on top of that and a lot comes with that. And it, we never were hated by anybody that knew us. It was really weird. It was, my father did such a good job of being, we were so nice to everyone that when they got to meet us, they were like, man, y'all are really nice. So we were well, well-behaved kids, man. Uh, punishment was a big thing in our house. Uh, my mom did a lot of the punishment, but my father, all he had to do was go, he'd whistle or go, hey, and it stopped. My father whipped me one time. My mother had cleaned out the closet and there was belts on the bed where she cleaned the closet out. And he was mad and before he could cool down, we was in the bedroom and the belts are right there. So it was out and I got whipped with the belt by my father one time. But the rest of the time it was just, he'd take my car keys or he would scold me and I learned from it, you know. So we were, we were well behaved, but we were, we were spoiled. We were not spoiled brats, but man, we had it all. We had, from a very young age, it was motorcycles, go-karts, and then and later on it was cars. I mean, I was driving a Corvette to school at 15. It, it, it was crazy. Um, but through all of that, even though we had money, 
we had love. I mean, my father loved his his sons, his mothers. I mean, his 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 wife, my mother. He he loved his family. The Bagwell family had love, and 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 that was big, man. You got love, and everything's going good. You got money. You know, for 17 years, that's a long time. I mean, Santa Claus came and visited the Bagwells every year. And then when I learned that the Santa Claus was Steve Bagwell, the respect, the respect for him went up so much on how he how he handled what he did. And, you know, with with all that success, he got into drag racing along the way at a young age, but kept it going to where he was an NHA, NHRA, National Hot Rod Association. He's a Hall of Famer in that. He, he drag raced for years. That was his passion. That was his love. His other huge hobby was, was deer hunting. He loved deer hunting. He had several big bucks and the memories of going in. I remember out of the first deer hunting trip I ever went on, I remember I was 10 years old and I had a special gun built just for me. It was a 44 Magnum, but it was a rifle with a scope on it and everything. And I'm, these are like professional deer hunters, my father was, and I'm 10 years old. And my other two brothers, they were older, but they didn't really stay in the stand long. They'd get down. My father put me in the stand the first time. And three hours later, when he came back, I was still there. And 40 feet in the air, 10 years old, freezing to death. And I stayed there the whole time. So I loved deer hunting. And the bond that happens with your father on deer hunting things or sporting events like drag racing and deer hunting, it was, it was wonderful, man. I mean... It was really a, it was really special. I mean, nobody goes deer hunting and has running water. Nobody goes deer hunting and has heat and TV and a phone in the mobile home. Nobody. But but we did. It was like deer hunting. It was it was like deer hunting with 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 a with a rich person, and that's what we were. I mean, we were a rich family that enjoyed life, and man, we enjoyed life for. A long time, and my father was the head of that. I remember sporting events was a huge thing for us. Um, sporting events, my brothers were fantastic athletes, and so was I. So I remember at a young age, we'd always go to the football game to see John and Stevie, and then and then it was time for me to go. You know, you know, my dad would go, and a lot. My mom didn't miss a game um, ever, and my father didn't miss a football game. But for baseball. He, baseball usually had it where you could park and still watch the game. Sprayberry High School, you could park on Sandy Plains Road in center field and watch the whole game. And everybody knew that the Brown Bronco was Steve Bagwell watching his all-state, all-county, all-state baseball kid, you know, playing baseball. And if I hit a single, he beat the horn once. I've hit a double, twice, triple, three times, and I've had a home run, he'd lay on it. And it just was such a special thing to see him out there always to be there. If that truck wasn't there, if that Bronco wasn't there, I don't know what I would have done, but it was always there, always there. Um, it was just, he just had a, he had a certain respect thing about him, man, that everywhere he went, people just respected him. He, he demanded respect without demanding it. It just... You just instantly knew that this this man had had power. This man was this this man was strong. He was a leader. He was a born leader, and I feel like all three sons were too. But man, how he found you know how he raised all three of us that way, and to stay so strong and loving, it just he just had a, a great life. You know, a lot of people get really upset uh, when they're family passes away and I totally understand but to me if you really believe in God and you're really you have a relationship with Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior death is a celebration um, a celebration of life I have not dropped a tear over my father passing away I've had nothing but great memories like the ones I'm telling y'all I mean Every thought I have on my father is, is about how wonderful he was and how, how I would go to the, 
I would go to the sporting goods store during baseball season and I'd grab a pair of cleats, a baseball mitt, a glove, a hat, and I would just sign my name to it. I, we, it it's, one, it's wonderful to have money. And I know they say money isn't everything, but, but man, money is very powerful. And it gave his family wonderful, wonderful years. And I remember in 1988 when he went broke, and the company was coming down. And then it, it was a couple years there lagging, uh, but he, it, he, was, he was done. I think he was done with life. But when I made it to WCW, he was born again, man. He, he had something to live for again. For the next 10 years, his son was Marcus Alexander Bagwell, and the Bagwells meant something again to him. That's how he saw it. And, and it made me feel good that I was able to give, to give him something back, him and my mother. I was able to give both of them. I was able to pay for their life. I was able to support them. They lived in the house of my oldest brother because my oldest brother had children and they helped out with them. But I supported my mother and father during that 10 years of WCW. And it was a wonderful 10 years, man. It was really a wonderful time to be able to take care of my parents. And remember, I was mad that I couldn't give them 17. They gave me 17 years of a wonderful life, brother. And I gave them, you know, 10. That's not, that's not real good, you know. Um, but, but still, it was all I could do, and it meant something to me. Uh, along with the wrestling, man, I remember when mom got into the wrestling thing with, uh, with WCW and he was so excited about that. He would he get to come on the road and man, he had his buff Bagwell Capital One credit card and he'd whip it out and let people know that was his boy. And he kept a WCW Capital One credit card, a buff Bagwell one, and a buff Bagwell Lex Luger WCW magazine cover on him at all times. If anybody said they didn't know Buff Bagwell, he was like, well, I'm not sure where you've been for the last 20 years, but you know, if you, you're, if you don't know Buff Bagwell, you're crazy. I was like, Dad, it don't matter no more. It don't matter. But he, he was my biggest fan, man. Stevens Lamar Bagwell was my father's name. S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S. And it was pronounced Steppens, but... Somewhere along the way, we this it was always just Steve growing up for him and, and for us, but his actual real name is Stephens Lamar Bagwell. Um, March 17th, St. Patrick Day is his, was his birthday every year. And uh, we've lost a leader. We've lost a powerful, powerful man, man that, that knows about life. I learned more. I learned more around my father than I ever learned in my entire life at school. Uh, I mean, I learned how, I learned what life was about with my father. He taught me things that matter, man, like how bills and light switches that are on and gasoline costs money. And like, yeah, we were spoiled rotten, but we wouldn't spoil brats. He taught us what to do. I mean. I crank my car every morning, and if I didn't let my car warm up, he was coming, and you were going to get something happen was going to happen to you. And back in the old days, they had them, they was called an automatic choke. You get in your car, and you hit the gas pedal one time, and you crank your car, and your car would run fast. It'd go, ah, and then after two minutes, and I mean two, you hit the gas pedal again, it goes, ah, and it comes, the RPMs come down. If my father did not hear that at 3225 Trickham Road, he was coming to get the keys. So every morning, running late for school, every single morning, it was that damn automatic choke. <laughs> but memories like that, that were there are memories that that help me in life to this day with bills, with money, with Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law, man, if it can happen, it will. I look at everything I do under Murphy's Law. I go into it knowing that car's going to pull out, knowing that person's going to do this, and it prepares me for life 
going on that one lesson he taught me, it really helped me in my wrestling career. Murphy's Law is, you know, you wrestle a guy and his move is this move. Well, Murphy's Law is to plan on that guy messing that move up. And if he did mess it up, because of the way my father raised me, I was ready for it. I was ready for that move to be messed up so I could counter it and fix it and make it, make it better. Now, that's tough when you got a thousand moves, but that's the outlook I had on everything. It was, I would try to be prepared for the inevitable to happen. And if it did happen, I was ready for it. Life, life skills that Stephens Lamar Bagwell taught me. He's a great man, man. Uh, I will miss, I will miss my father. I will miss him so much. When my father, when my mother passed two years ago, November 5th, he really, it took a chunk out of him that day, but he, he stuck around for two more years, but I really believe with all of my heart, I had a prayer with him. Me and my girlfriend, Stacy prayed with him. And there's no doubt in my heart that my mother and my father are in heaven today. And I think they're together looking down, very proud of their clean, sober, Marcus Alexander Bagwell son. Thank you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop for all future videos. And if you're interested in cool NWO shirts like this one right here or other wrestling sports merch, click the link at the top of your screen or in the description of this video to jump over to Fanatics and place your order today. Ha <laughs> ha!